We've now got under our belts, in your mind and also on this, a whole bunch of formulas for measuring stuff, right? For measuring areas, measuring perimeters, measuring volumes, all that good stuff. But the one thing that all of these formulas have in common is that they have to be on a particular shape, right? It's got to be a rectangle. It's got to be a parallelogram. Those sides, they've got to be exactly parallel. If they're just like off a little bit, your formula's stuffed, okay? Um, your circle has to be perfectly round, your sphere, etc. So in other words, they're these very specialized shapes. And if you're just a little bit off, the formula's useless to you, okay? But the thing is, the real world is full of these shapes. In fact, in a real way, like, okay, I'll give you an example. This is the example I always use. My watch, right? This is the watch I wear every day. Um, I've worn it for about... But five years, okay? Now it looks like the face of the watch is circular. It looks like it's circular, right? But if you got, like, I've been quite rough with this watch. If you got like a microscope out and you zoomed in on the edge, you'd find it's like super bumpy and jagged and it's got heaps of dents in it because I'm not very careful with it. Now, for that reason, you can't really use the area of a circular formula on this because it's not really so okay and in real life you get shapes that don't obey nice neat rules about what kinds of like how parallel their sides are or whether the opposite edges are equal right when you got weird shapes like this what do you do really smart uh, mathematician named Simpson he came up with a rule that could take a weirder looking shape like this with curved edges or lots of weird straight edges and approximate the area uh, it's not gonna be exact but you don't need to be exact a lot of the time. As long as you're close enough, you can work out, well, how much is it going to cost to put, cover this thing with grass or, or pave it over or whatever, okay? So I'm going to show you the formula. I'm going to show you the way that it works. And I'm going to give you some um, enough hooks that it will help you use the formula data sheet with this, okay? So here is a particular kind of area that what I've done is I've got some sort of straight sides that I've measured out. And then I've got this weird wonky side over here. Now, the way that I've done it is that these straight parts are all um, perpendicular, okay? So think about how we did that field diagram. Do you remember that? It's like, okay, you walked across the diagonal, and then one of you stood in the middle, and then someone else walked off um, at right angles. And then you, like, you, you had your, your trundle wheel, and you measured out however many meters that was, okay? So what we want is for these distances to be the same. They're called H for height. So you're kind of like looking at this diagram sideways. And then these three distances here, just like on a field diagram, you need to measure what they are. Because they're all distances, we label them all with the letter D. But because there's three of them, we call them, we tend to call them, the first distance, so that's DF, the middle distance, so that's DM, and the last distance, so that's DL. Okay? So they're all distances, so we, all, we use the letter D for all of them. But um, I did not choose the order of the letters, first, middle, last, that's what it stands for, okay? Just so you can tell them apart. Uh, just so you can, you can tell just them label them like one, two, or three? You could, but the reason why I'm using these particular labels is because the formula sheet uses these. Okay. Okay. All right, are you ready? Here comes the actual formula, right? If I'm working out an area and I have all these four measurements on here, okay? It will be approximately equals to, equal to, here's the rule. It's a little bit awkward, but you take whatever this, um, this interval distance is here, and it's the same each time, divided by three, and then you multiply it by this weird thing here. The first distance, four lots of the middle distance, and the last distance, okay? Now that's a bit weird and random. There is some fancy schmancy theory and maths behind where this formula comes from. You can ask me about that later on if you're curious. But the important thing is it does an amazingly good job of getting an approximation of this area. Okay? So if I were to, I'm just going to use another color here. If I were to know, um, just to give some examples of some distances here. So suppose this is 10 meters and this is 10 meters. Let's put some lengths on here. If that was 10, I don't know, this looks like it's about 16 meters. That's about the same in the middle there, 10. And this is a little bit less. Let's call that eight, okay? So as an example, how am I gonna use this? So I'm gonna just quote, the area is approximately equal to, here's the height, the height of each of these chunks. So each of them is 10, it's, the, it's important they're the same. So I'm gonna go 10 over three. 
and then I'm going to multiply by it. Okay, you just go one at a time. Here's the first one, 16. Here's the middle one, I'm going to do four of them. So that's four times 10. And then there's the last one, it's eight. Okay. Now, the four is part of the formula. Okay, it's part of the formula. Now, you might be like, well, why is there a four there? Again, I can't explain, but it's quite, actually it takes quite a lot of time and it's very difficult. Okay? What's amazing is how well it works. Let's just quickly evaluate. Um, 16 plus 40 plus 8 is 56, 64. Um, 640 divided by 3, uh, that's going to be 213.3, etc. Uh, what's this? Okay. So what I've got here is um, an approximation for this. Now, just quickly, this is an approximation. How can we tell? You know how I say, oh, do a sense check as much as you possibly can. Is this reasonable? Okay. What I'm going to try is like, what else could I use to approximate this shape? What else could I use? Hmm. Well, I've got these um these perpendicular lines here. Okay. Don't draw this. Just follow along with me, because otherwise you'll make a mess of your diagram, as I'm about to. Okay. Let's just say, uh, what if we imagine these were straight, right? Like that line there, and that line there. Okay. Just pretend. Okay. Now, if they were straight, what would this overall shape be? What would the overall shape be? It would be a trapezium, right? Because you're meant to get these bits which are parallel to each other. Um, so I know the area of a trapezium. The area of a trapezium is H on to A plus B. What's the H in this case? It's the height of the trapezium. Okay? So in this case, the height of the whole trapezium would be 20. Do you see that? Like I'm just trying to get this approximate to uh, 20 over 2. Um, what are the A and B? Yeah, it's the, it's the parallel sides. Do you agree with that? So 16 plus 8. 16 plus 8. Okay, um, this is 10. 16 plus 8 is 24. Uh, 24. So that's 240. Okay, now this is probably not right. Happens all the time. Um, this is probably not right because as you can see, I've taken these like these straight part, uh, these curvy parts rather, and I've replaced them with straight lines. Clearly, that's going to be a problem. Okay, um, but at least I know I'm in the right ballpark. Hopefully, like yeah, it's not like I'm ten times or twice as big. I put more money on this being a better answer. 